Welcome. Hello there, everyone. Today, we're going to have a look at Open Wheel Manager 2 that is releasing on the 24th of October. So uh, I have received this key a little bit early. There was no sort of embargo or anything. I was free to do what I wanted with it. And keep in mind that this is, uh, as such, most likely an early access development build. So uh, some things might change, some things might feel a bit different. But we're going to take a look at, uh, as I said, Open Wheel Manager 2. I have seen a little bit of uh, other people playing it, but keep in mind that uh, this is my first foray into the game, so we might uh, need a little bit of, uh, you know, learning before we're good at it. But first things first, we're just going to start a new game. The only thing I've really done is uh, mess around with the audio so that I do not go down, and neither do you guys. So let's just jump straight into this, get a new game going. Let us name our manager. Apparently we can choose a library before the new season as a start parameter. Generate random drivers. I don't think we can do this because it's going to be fairly random to us anyway, so we haven't played this before. Allow rule change from the first season. Let's go with that one. Make it a little bit more spicy. Our past experience. We can be an X driver, an engineer, car designer, or a commercial director. And it seems like they do give uh, some traits. They give you two buffs. In this case, some neg negotiation points, design points, production points, and negotiation factor. Now the other three here were saying points. So I assume that is based on a point system. Uh, but this negotiation factor, I assume, yeah, your team is when it comes to assigning new drivers to your team. Uh, the others, I guess, are boost for you know certain things. I guess the gap is helpful negotiating with staff and suppliers. Suppliers there is an interesting one because I assume that means that we can get supplies for parts. Um, so yeah. Out of these ones, of course, I would like to go car engineer or car designer. The fact that there's uh, two different ones here is uh, a bit interesting. X driver could, of course, be good way for Iggy. I'm going to be signing a lot of new drivers, but honestly, I think we'll go commercial director here and just see uh, what we can do with staff and supplies for this one. Although, again, I do quite know want to have a look at everyone. This is just going to be my first foray into this. It's going to be a pretty basic one. So uh, let's learn about this game together and see what it has to offer. Okay, apparently we can select a game period. Currently it's uh, 1996 that is only available with real racing. Mods are in development. Apparently this game will be moddable. And it even tells us the championships here that we have. We apparently have OVWC1. Don't know what that stands for. It's on a 10, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1 point system, meaning the top six cars are gonna get points. Uh, no safety cars, no red flags, no green technologies, so overtaking buttons. Okay, so basically just racing. And apparently we do have some other series being uh, simulated and we have how many? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 20 tracks available to us from the game start here. So that's what's good. Uh, I do feel like this looks a little bit more like puzzle pieces, but uh, that's fine. I guess we can design the car, but I don't know if we do it here. I don't think we really have any other options. So let's just continue. And here we actually have the team list. Now, if this is 19... Uh, 96 then teams are not going to have any sort of restrictions on their funds so we're kind of seeing it here in their balance like these guys have 275 million was it these guys that had 95 so you can kind of pick your challenge here and it's uh you know represented with boxes they go from uh three six nine ten best of ten uh you should you know been safe self-explanatory but we have car drivers building staff sponsors reputation so what I want to see if I can find it is a team that has good buildings, uh, good drivers, basically, but a weak car, because that is what I enjoy the most about these games. So these two, I would assume, are probably one of the stronger teams. These guys have money. They got buildings, they got drivers, they got sponsors. So that's an interesting choice as well. Pinardi here is probably going to be the hard mode challenge, if you will. But uh, yeah. This one could also be a choice. They've got decent drivers, a bad car, bad buildings, bad staff, bad everything. But I think we're going to start with something a little bit higher on the menu here. Kinovaki might be a little bit too high for us, but at the same time, I want to see what the game has to offer. So let's pick them. We have a decent amount of money, maybe too much money, honestly. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very tempted to start with Pinati. But again, starting a game that you don't actually know how it works immediately you know like that it's kind of bad brasilia has a good car omega 2 could be interesting uh, mcfly i would assume is probably one of the higher rated along with bellucci 
just uh, based on their reputation and also their money. Uh, no, these guys have the same reputation. So reputation doesn't actually have anything to say with how high or low rated they are. Okay, I think we're just going to go with Kinowaki here. It might be a little bit too easy, but I want to learn the game. This might just be a one-off, but that should be interesting enough. And uh, do I want to get help? Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. We get immediately tossed into uh, this one. We can change the library in four weeks. Or do we have four weeks to change the library? Who knows? Uh, apparently, we can sell team shares for money. So we can sell 1% of our shares for 570,000. I don't think we need to. We still have money, I would assume. Where do I see my balance? Right there. And apparently, we can give speed just before our race. We can uh, install experimental car parts, conduct a secret test session. <laughs> Okay, that is uh, that's interesting. So we actually do have potentially some subterfuge here. Uh, apparently with leadership points, design points, production points, negotiation, research, contract, tires, and engine work points. Okay. Can be only practice. Can be only practice. Can be only practice. Okay. So it seems like research is mainly obtained in practice, but we're getting some from Giuseppe Trejo. So these four... I would assume, uh, yeah, this one is not. These four, I would assume you get on track, practice mainly, or even the race. Uh, this one, on the other hand, weekly income, gain from office. I assume that's the building, the manager, the marketing manager, production points, uh, factory and engineer. Okay. Team policy, research department, chief of designer, Giuseppe Trejo. Okay, that's, an, that's a very interesting one. So... Uh, you're kind of limited here, even if you have a done bunch of money, I would assume, because you have design, production, and negotiation, and research points, leadership points, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, looks like a bit of an interesting way to do things. But for now, we'll try and figure things out here by going into our mailbox. So, welcome to the team. Everyone's looking forward to working with you to reach new heights. According to pre preliminary calculations, our car is now average in the championship. In a few weeks, preseason tests will begin, where we'll find out what positions we are in. Perhaps we'll have time to solve some chassis problems before the tests begin. You can find out about the existing problems in the design department. Okay, so your chassis has problems that might need solving. And apparently this man is our... I don't even know what he is. I would assume engineer or research based on this symbol. Um, but we're going to have to figure that out. 8th leadership, 7th level. Might need one, some more information here, but honestly, for now, that's fine. Let's go back to our inbox. Free places for sponsors. Still free places on the car for sponsor stickers. Okay, let's find sponsors because there's still quite a lot of time left. Uh, the way you don't need to hurry with negotiations. So Sam Oliver here. I would assume this is our marketing manager or marketing director. How you want to look at it with the briefcase. And uh, the man is uh, a unit. He's just lacking one level point to be maxed. Thiago Ribeiro announced plan to end his career. Uh, so the current contract will be lost in his racing career. He will re leave racing at the end of the 96th year. So I assume that this is contract with Coral. That is not us. Okay. Uh, unless he is our driver somehow. But yeah, man's retiring. We'll respect that, I guess. Use this button on screens where it's available to learn more. What happens if I click this button? Presentation of new car. Priest and test coming up, where everyone will be able to see our car in action. We should unveil our car and show it off to media. Okay. Can I actually design the car myself? Mushrubs. <laughs> I guess that is our sponsor. So we have some presets here that we can go with. 12 different ones. If we can find something that looks decent. I guess basically most of these pieces are for the lines, and then you can switch the colors around as you see fit. Which one do we like more? I'm probably going to get roasted. I kind of like this one, to be fair, but probably going to have to switch up the color scheme a bit. Hmm. Not too big a fan of that one. This one's a little bit too wild. Let us see, let us see, let us see what we have on offer here. I think I'm going to go with this one. It's pretty, you know, basic to some degree. But we can make something, uh, something interesting. Rather than blue, it's probably going to be a bit boring for most people, compared to, but black and white is decent for me. Can we find silver somewhere? 
we can actually make exactly the color that we want for this too. So if I had a color code scheme, because it uses the basic ones, we could actually make some pretty insane cars. Honestly, tad boring uh, to be fair, but I feel like this looks, uh, looks good enough. If we really wanted to, we could for instance make a sky blue car. So this does give some pretty pretty good options for people who want to design cars. I have no design taste, so we'll just do a very simple black and white li livery. And if we end up playing more of these, we can of course change that up as uh, people see fit. But we'll choose this, that's fine. I did press continue, was I supposed to? I guess not. Um, do the session for the chassis is available. Okay, so I thought continue there was that we were, you know, done with delivery, but apparently not. So we've gotten three leadership points. I guess this goes forward a week at a time. Uh, develop design points, production points, negotiation points, all these have gone up. And apparently we can use some of our design points here to solve an oversteering issue. Improves the efficiency from 90 to 100 percent. So the chassis here uh, does seem to be very basic. Uh, level four out of ten. Drag reduction, uh, fast corners, low corners, but it seems pretty well balanced. Let's be honest, it's a pretty well well balanced one, and it also tells us the effectiveness of our tires at certain temperatures. So, as you can see, the wets if they're underheated uh, lose some effectiveness. The intermediates if they're not in you know a cold range or a high temp range they're not going to be good. And we basically have 100% effectiveness for hard and soft, no matter what we do. Now, we do want to solve that oversteering problem, so let's just try and see what that does. We have to wait a week. And what is this? CFT. Okay, that's interesting. I think this is if I want to upgrade uh, my parts, level them up. And also, I love the front wing here. I assume this means that I need 20 uh, design points, and I'm going to have to wait a week. So more than so than your money deciding thing, it's going to just be your factories and your staff by looks of it. Because where do we get design points from? From research department, from uh, our team policy currently, of course, but our chief designer, our Giuseppe Tereggio. So I don't know why the music's only uh, peaked up there, but that's fine. Maybe it needs a little bit of balancing. Uh, but yeah, the design points there do actually have sources and they're going to basically limit your progression here. So while this is interesting, some of them do need, as you can see, the underbody is going to need research. The cooling is just going to need uh, design points. Uh, same for the right wing, the side pods. I would assume the front wing too. Maybe it's going to need some more research as we level it up. Uh, it's currently level four, but we can have a look at that later. Chassis for 1997, chassis for 96. So we can actually start working on a next year's chassis. We can even choose clearance of the ground. Okay, high clearance gives us more tire saving, but gives us less drag. Uh, downforce, and what does the slope angle do? Slope angle also has an effect on drag reduction, so if you really wanted to, we could make a tiny car that has, that is really speedy in the fast corners, has really good tire saving, and if we did this, yeah, incredibly quick in the fast corners, uh, slow corners and drag, and drag reduction, not so good, but it seems to be like equivalent exchange, basically. If we uh, if we look at it here, because if we take the 3% from here and from here and into this one, so they become 80, then the 30% from fast corners, they all still add up to, well, 600% is what I'm trying to say. That is uh, that is quite good, but it does give you, you know, options to mess around with this. Figuring out what is the, you know, best uh, setup is probably going to be decided by, um, you know, what kind of car you're looking for. So, slow corners here, we're going to suck in them. I don't think I want that. I think I want something where we are kind of more balanced. We could make a car that just eats tires, <laughs> actually. Um, you need some downforce. So the clearance, no, it's the length that gives us fast corner speed. This is going to eat tires. So yeah, it's again. You are actually going to have to find uh, some sort of a balance here, but I think what we can do here is just make a very balanced car. Try and figure out where we get those uh, sweet mid spots for everything. Now that is actually going to be quite tricky, I think, too. Uh, lacking something here from the tire department. There we go. So I think we're just going to make a very basic car, which isn't actually recommended. And it's actually going to cost uh, some design points a week as well. 50k 
but I think the earlier start the better you would fare. But honestly, the fact that you can make a very, you know, basic car, so to speak, is interesting. Um, but what I think we're going to do instead is make a car that has a little bit of boost on the drag reduction, the fast corners, slow corners. The tire saving is a bit of a concern, though, so let's do it like this. So it's a little bit lacking in the fast corners. It would actually be great to make a car, I think, that is really, really good at one aspect. I don't know if drag reduction is going to be the best part, uh, best thing in this game, because this does seem fairly balanced, that's the thing. So... Let's just try and get drag reduction 100%. Let's sacrifice a little bit of a fast corner. Let's sacrifice some corners to get, I think. I do want more slow corners, so that's the thing. Downforce 2 would be nice. But let's gamble on this chassis. Again, I don't know what's going to be great, what's going to be bad. Or, again, it's just, I'm so undecided. But this is this is great. It's car setup 2 for the green zone. Apparently the more balanced our chassis is, the easier? No. Okay. Let's just make a balanced chassis and see how it works, and then we can start experimenting next time around. But this is actually really, really interesting that they allow you to make your chassis and focus what your car strengths are going to be. And here we've actually kind of cheesed out an extra percentage point somehow, so we'll take that. Let's start research, start developing next year's chassis. And apparently, this is what we can expect. We can expect a chassis to reach 7 out of 10. Uh, we could work on the green zone. We can finish ahead of schedule. It's currently looking like 40% across the board. So I guess we're going to have to work with this throughout the weeks towards next season. Yeah. Let's go back to main menu. I want to see what else we can focus on because currently we are focusing on research. Uh, we can focus on production. We can focus on negotiations or we can focus on staff. One promotion trainee to regular on each building per week. I would assume this is going to give you more points. Let's see if we can find the buildings. Uh, the top expert regular trainee. Okay, so we have a bunch of trainees in the office. Same for the research, research, same for the wind tunnel, same for the factory. So, as you can see, we get three here. We have more top uh, researchers, but I don't know what is going to be more valuable in terms of getting points. I think what we are going to have to do, though, is uh, probably go on to that promote staff thing. I would assume that the more you know high-level staff you have, the more points you're going to get. And I want to see if our production is going to go up as our staff increases. So let's go back to that menu and focus on staff. We can actually also focus on increasing the shareholder's confidence. I don't think that's going to be a problem. This is our profile. Okay, so we have a contract with oil engine. Okay. Apparently, it's a really reliable one with decent power, but low cooling and somewhat okay fuel economy. Wondering if they're gonna, you know, grow up throughout the uh, the years. We also apparently have a tire provider. Yeah, it's really good on the wet weather compounds. Not as good on the uh, on the dryers. That's interesting. I'm the manager, and apparently I'm a joker by looks of things. And here we have our stuff. Okay, Colin Lane, Duncan McLaren, Duncan McLaren, and Sam Olivier. And I would assume this is, you know, manufacturing research. Uh, well, I assume this is manufacturing, this is research, this is uh, negotiations. And here, I guess we have our drivers. So we do have a way to actually have a look at our staff. Okay. Uh, work with tires, tire whisperer for sure. 7 out of 10 on speed, 8 out of 10 on overtake and position. Little aggression, decently stable, concentration, wet weather, feedback. Okay. So driver stats here are split into 9. And uh, 1 to 10. It's not too bad. Uh, again, we'll have to see what is actually the most uh, effective one. Uh, prepare to skip season to drive slow car. He does not believe our, you know, car has anything to do. Uh, anything good anyways. Let's have a look at uh, Yukio Takahara. I assume this is our talent, I would assume. Second driver, okay. He is not as good as the other one. We might need to go uh, scouting for a uh, better one. Contract until the end of 97. Who are you? Reserve driver, okay. This is the guy that keeps giving us extra points though. So as you can see, reserve driver feedback, I would assume has an effect on uh, design points. Um, I thought it was something else as well. Research points as well. 
Um, if we do split the line bat, he's eight feedback. I would assume that's the stat anyways. It's the only thing that makes sense really, particularly also because of the fact that it matches the 0 0.8 from design points. So that's interesting, but we might need to have a look and see if we can actually get a different second driver, a more skilled one, to make things more interesting. Now, we have gone a little bit to the car, we're currently solving an issue. We can work on chassis, again, I kind of got lost here. What do we have in production? Let's see what we have on the menu. You can actually have a look here. Car parts condition is an important factor in influencing car speed, but don't be in a hurry to get 100% repaired for every race. Repairs and upgrade cost money and you need to make sure the team has enough balance. That shouldn't actually be a problem for us. Current param parameters of the parts are shown in brackets. Click on the icon above the column will select all checkboxes, okay. If I have a sponsor or partner contract with an engine supplier, I can repair free and upgrade if upgrades are available. The engine for free once every week, okay. Upgrades availability is shown by a special icon. Hovering over it will show details of the available upgrade. Okay, so apparently we do can't, I assume this means that potentially we can upgrade the chassis. And once we do, we just, you know, click here to upgrade it. We have four engines available, I would think. Uh, you know, a set of brakes. Gearboxes, suspension, hydraulics. So, yeah. Nothing much here. Garage, what does that have to say? Okay, so these are the two cars, you know, put against each other, so to speak. And here we have our components. The engine is oil engine. The brakes are rotorium. They are incredibly reliant, but not very performant. Kind of same here for the gearbox. Very reliable, not as uh, performant. Suspension, same there, and the hydraulics, I think we need to switch those out. So this team is clearly going for reliability over performance, which is fine. It's choices that are made. Does this mean we can upgrade our engine if we get 50 engine work points? Or maybe just the engine mapping for the green zone. I still don't know what that means, so we'll have to figure it out. Your engine's current specification may differ from what you see in the engine search and engine supply profile. This is because when a supplier upgrades an engine, Upgrade is first made to teams with a contract like sponsor. Okay, so apparently your contract has an effect on what is available to you. When a supplier makes the second upgrade in season, the first upgrade becomes available for partner contracts. And only on the third upgrade does the first upgrade come for teams for the client contract. Okay, so depending on the level of your, of your contract, you'll be one or two upgrades behind the top level. Expanding the green zone of the engine mapping setup increases your chance of getting a plus one plus two bonus to one of the engine parameters before the race. Initially, all engines have a green zone of 20%. Okay. So apparently we can get a plus one or plus two bonus to one of the parameters of the engine. So if we got a plus two to power, it would be the quickest thing out there. And apparently we need to hit the green zone for that. That's a bit of an interesting one. Basically a setup uh, limiter, I think. Research and model purge, we can actually sacrifice, I assume, 10 production points for 8 design points. I don't think we really need to. I want to figure out what uh, production points do, and we can even, as you can see, revert them back. But we're going to be losing 2 points on process, so for now, I don't think we'll be touching this. The facilities, we did have a look at these. We uh, do have all of them maxed. Or we should have picked a different team so we could see how much it is. And as you can see, if we want to produce, construct a test track, it would actually cost us... Um, 50 negotiation points, or leadership points, sorry. And take a year and a half, almost. So, leadership points apparently, I guess, are spent on making strategic decisions, improving buildings, firing drivers. So we need these to be able to actually do things. We can't just do everything at once, which I guess is fine. It's a bit of a limiting factor, but at the same time, it's uh, not the shabbiest. I guess this is, these are all our contracts. So we have a client contract with Oil Engine. I believe that means we are going to be two upgrades behind. That's going to suck. Um, it is what it is, though. Apparently, also, as they said, we could try and get some more sponsors here. Currently, we have Mushrubs here, having three other slots. If I want to find a sponsor, what am I going to need? Oh, I'm going to need... I'm going to need... Uh, negotiation points. We currently have seven. Uh, we get 2.75 weeks, so we're going to have to wait a few weeks to get this going. But I want to have a look at facilities again. Where exactly do I get staff? Because we're currently 60 out of 100. Can I hire more? Or do they automatically, you know, grow, so to speak? 
Oh, we can already start working on contracts for the 97 season, I guess. Okay. And this is seasonal money from the contracts as well. 14 million, 15 million. We are paying a bunch though for the items here, the gearboxes, the brakes, the hydraulic suspension. We could order more parts, I guess, if we really wanted to. We can also have a look at an engine supplier. Can we get drive area? Offer a contract. Let's see if we can get a client price per part 1.2 million. Okay. Partner contract. Sponsor contract. I guess if we give them a sponsorship, we get the thingies. And we could send an offer for a partner contract. But yeah, let's not mess with that right now. But that is interesting. Um, currently, they, they don't have a partner contract for next year. So maybe we can snatch um, that spot from Brasilia currently. Let's see what else we have available to us here. So currently we're with Oil Engine. They're good on power and reliability. They're not so good on the other things. But, you know, more talk here is even worse. Green Motors, not really. So we're actually basically on top three here of choices, I think. Uh, Engine Easy wouldn't be too shabby either. Max reliability and fuel economy. And they have nothing for next year. Can we get a sponsorship contract with you? Question is how many years we would like to do that. So yeah, we'll have a look at that later. But that is very interesting that we can actually already start working on contracts for next year for both our first driver, serve driver, uh, chief designer. It tells us tells us everything that is actually you know finishing. We can work on sponsorship contracts for next year. Very very good, honestly. And uh, you probably should do this fairly early, early though, if you can. Financially, let's have a look at what we have available to us. Not really a lot here. Just week one's balance, week two's balance. I'm wondering if we can go back in the weeks, but as you can see, we lose about 1.2 million a week. We're getting 600,000 from our sponsors. We pay about a million in building maintenance, some salaries. So yeah, 1.2 uh, million going uh, out. We do have 300 million to play with, so even if we keep this up as it is right now, it still takes about 5 million, 5 million about 4 to 5 years to run out. Apparently also, we can take loans, but it's going to cost us leadership points. Very interesting. And the cal calendar here is the last thing. So, looks like we have 3 practice weeks before first race in Brazil. And then it just keeps on going with the race every other week, it looks like it. Yeah, every two weeks. So a bit of a boring from a calendar standpoint. No, you know, double headers, triple headers, but it's 96. Makes sense. And it even tells you how many laps there are. What you can expect in terms of your tire wear, people clear are taking, chances of rain. I like that. You can also have a look at the, you know, simulated championships, but it looks like they have the exact same schedule. So, guess that's going to be developed too down the line. But yeah, so far it's been looking good. I do think what I want to try and develop the car though. And so far the only way we really have, you know, looked for us to be able to develop the car is by working on the chassis mainly. And, uh, well, getting the, you know, engine mapping here. The, where was that screen? The CFD, there it is where we actually do need either the sign points and also some research. So this doesn't seem easy to come by. We might have the only source being in the raids, the raids, the races. I don't know why I said raids, but uh, we'll see how that works out. Depending on the components level, the cost improvement might vary. Entry level details can be approved by the signing points. Then higher level details will also need research points. So yeah, as I expected, once you get higher up there, you're going to need some research points to upgrade the car. Cooling costs a little less than other components since it does not affect this car speed, but only the engine's reliability. Okay. Guess that's fine. I guess this is a set of green zone then. I think we're getting there though, honestly. We're getting closer. I know that I have a bunch of these green dots here, but I think we're starting to understand how this works. This is my current negotiations. Okay. I think for now though, we might just, you know, get into that first test session, see how that works. We have solved the oversteering problem. Uh, okay. We can actually improve that efficiency a little bit more. We'll have to wait a week though. Didn't actually level up the chassis. So I guess that is mainly how you develop your car through the available research here. 
upgrading the chassis. And it's going to cost us six of the production points there to, and 200,000 to upgrade this. Let's wait a couple of weeks here because we can have the first test weekend in five weeks. So we'll be able to get enough points to do that design next week. I thought apparently the weekly income is going down. I don't know what's going on there. But let's go to facilities here and just see if they have anything about staff. Okay, so building level affects total number of staff. 20 staff for each level then. Uh, top down staff distribution affects the number of points gained per week. Okay, so I wasn't wrong. Upgrading a building requires leadership points and money. So this seems to be fairly expensive. Meaning that this is actually a great star team. We might have gone for the Red Bull kinda here. Uh, building upgrades are quite expensive. Recommend to start them with your balance at least twice the cost of the building. Of course, as the construction goes over budget, you can always cancel it. But the money already spent will not be returned to you. Okay, so I guess buildings have a weekly cost while it's being built. Save your team money. You can disclose buildings, except for the office building and dismiss all staff. In this case, you will not have to pay staff salaries at building maintenance. But all points corresponding to this building will be reset and stop their weekly growth. Okay. When a building is reopened, your HR department will start hiring training level staff. And it will take a long time for the staff to train up uh, and for the building to reach maximum capacity. Staff training speed depends on the leadership of the top staff member for this building. Okay. Uh, that is very interesting, honestly. I do want to build a test track at one point to see what it actually does, but as you can see, a 75 weeks, 750,000. 7.5 million times 7.5. Seven times seven, four, nine, sixty million to build this, maybe? My math is probably a little bit off and it ain't that much, but you get what I'm saying. I still have a week to change the livery. Okay, so I guess it will just pick this livery then if I don't change it. Which is fine. Uh, we're still on the one training to regular on each building, so basically four upgrades a week. Which isn't bad, but as you can see, the staff numbers are going up. Um, definitely. And this one is now up to 4.9. It was, you know, lower than that. This one's up to 3.3, so it's a little bit slower. But we are seeing, you know, our staff develop. Apparently, we didn't get the upgrade done before the test weekend here in Canada, but we can probably get it done for the test weekend in Japan. Sorry, we're in a test week in Deutschland and uh, Germany. So, uh, we'll, see, we'll see what we can do with that. Let's head to the test weekend, see what we have available to us. I should probably check my mail. Okay, testing session in Germany. Car 1, car 2. Uh, track configuration, slow corners, nothing special. Uh, fast corners. It actually tells you how important they are. Slow corners and fast corners not really important here. Straight's more important. We have a powerful engine, which will give us some advantage on track with so many straights. A chassis, a low drag, which will give us an advantage on track with so many straights. Our engine performance is higher than the chassis level, so we will benefit from the abundance of straights on the track. Okay. So basically, they will give you an update before the races, or in this case, train session, that tells you the influence of certain track configurations. In this case, the slow corners, fast corners, straights. Slow corners are, you know, 3 out of 10 in importance, fast corners 2 out of 10. Straights are most of your importance here. I guess these all add up to 10, maybe. We'll see on the next one, because they do right now. So 50% of your focus here should be straight line speed, 30% of your slow corners, 20% of your fast corners. And that's a bit interesting here. Yeah. Track specific overtaking difficulty. Uh, I guess overtaking isn't difficult, 2 out of 10. Sado has a high overtaking skill, we'll give him an advantage though. Sado works well with tires, which will be very useful. Chassis is not good at tire saving, and that's not good news on this track. So yeah, tire wear is actually quite important. Fuel consumption is high, but it seems like we don't really have any concerns regarding that. Let's go to car setup, and apparently we're setting up the cars here for both of them. I don't know what this means, if it's going to be, I would assume that in practice it's going to be first dry, then wet maybe? I don't know. Okay, so this is actually fairly simple. We can set up the dry weather, wet weather, or neutral. I guess neutral is for both? Let's have you set up for dry weather and we'll try the other one for uh, our boy. So we can set up the engine for power, reliability, cooling, or fuel economy. Does this mean that if we hit that green zone, uh, we're going to actually end up with uh, that plus one plus two boost to power, because if so, we're going for it. And that was all I had to do, really. Just press setup. Okay. We did not hit, uh, you know, the windows we wanted. 
So for the drive of the hay, we're not getting any, you know, boosts or negatives. But I would assume that this means that if the session is going to, or if the race is going to be wet, we'd lose 10% downforce and 20% efficiency behind other cars. That's a bit interesting. Uh, let's try neutral and power here. We want to see if that gives, you know, buffs, debuffs for both. And they kind of do. So yeah, drag reduction minus 10%, downforce 5%, 5% efficiency behind car. I hope you can do more than just one setup session, but uh, this does seem to, you know, kind of have an effect on your strategy. And you're probably going to have to gamble on either, you know, dries or wets, depending on your weekend. Right now, the practice is wet, though. We did hit that power, though, and as you can see, it does give a plus one power to the engine on both dry and wet uh, surfaces. Let's go to practice sessions and see what we have available to us. Short stints are the fastest, but they reduce the total number of effective laps, which we can check in and check out of the garage. Leave blank to randomize. Okay, let's leave Takahara, the guy with lowest feedback, blank to randomize. And see what we can do with this guy. Okay, so that actually gives us more uh, setup, uh, basically the first setup run here. Race sim gives us, uh, you know, the four technologies to get during racing. We do need this one. I think we're just going to do this. It is a it is a testing one. So let's just put all the laps into getting this, which is going to be still shockingly low, just 3.6. If we do that for you, what are we going to get? He's not getting much more, honestly. I do kind of want to do this. We could also do tire research, engine research, race sim. Don't know what's best. Let's just leave him for random for now. Okay, 34 laps remaining. Apparently I am uh, screwing this. Yeah, let's just do it like that. Let's see what happens if we just leave it blank to randomize and see what they do. Apparently we can't do anything more than this. It's just uh, simulate. Back to the result, we end up 13th and 16th. Okay. 28 laps, 16 laps. That's a bit weird. Did I just tell him to do one lap maybe? That would be silly of me. Uh, but apparently it just went through. We didn't really see anything gained. But we did get the, some tire work points. We did get a little bit of research. Um, I might have clicked through that a little bit too quickly. Luckily we have more weekends where we can test that. Not really a big deal. We did solve that other issue though. Let's see if we were to upgrade now. It's still going to cost the exact same thing that it did last time. So I assume this means that we can do... I let, Let's just start this first. So what this means is that either we can do two upgrades at once, or after we do this, we're still going to have to do one more upgrade. The chassis is coming along nicely, apparently. So as you can see, uh, we're currently level two. The green zone is uh, maxing out. I'm wondering if you can put in extra work on something like this and have that uh, actually, you know, have an effect. We'll see, I guess. But now, though, I still don't think there's anything really much to do. It would be contracts for next year, things like that. But for now, I think we want to focus on getting uh, getting ourselves into a race and have a look at how that works. I have high enough po points to start a sponsor search. So it actually does tell you, which is good. Uh, let's go ahead and find a sponsor, see what it gives us. And uh, let's see what it tells us. Sponsor search is done by your sales department according to the instructions you've given. Sponsorship level you want to get from your sponsor. This value is limited by a team's reputation. I can search for a sponsor for this season, next season, or both. Oh, depending on level sponsorship, sponsor requests a different number of places for car stickers. Not be able to sign a contract if it do not satisfy the requirements of the sponsor. Toggle does not affect the search sponsors, only the visual appearance. So if you don't like to look at your sponsors, okay, never mind. I thought you just turned off your sponsors, but it shows you 97 ones. I'm wondering if I could have clicked on all of these and gotten more sponsors, but yeah, we'll see that later. But now that we're actually in another race weekend, uh, the production here, it did, I would assume, do both of them in one run, meaning that we save some money. So you can actually stack up, you know, available research and get both of them done at once, I think, unless we'll, I guess we'll see next week. I'm not, fo I'm not following the time too well in this one. Again, gives us a little bit of an update. Apparently our chassis is still not good at time saving, but overtaking here is difficult. Startups overtaking skill would be more important. And once again, these add up to about 10. So straight zone, slow corners, about equal in uh, focus. The fast corners, not so much. So in this one, it seems you have slow corners and fast corners and straight line speed being your three big ones. Let's set up the car. Um, I guess we'll set them up for dry weather, both of them, and see what happens. Although it's actually wet right now during practice. Does it help to set up for wet weather in practice condition? Let's see. 
Apparently, it at least alleviates all the negatives, even if the setup is really, really bad. So, what I'm assuming is happening here is that if you get a good setup, you might get buffs or whatever you're doing, but it probably will also get rid of all the negatives if you're, you know, doing the wrong thing. Let's put in 36 laps here on Knowledge on Parts again. Uh, for that, uh, you know, research. We'll actually get more here, which is interestingly enough. Do I have to maybe split it up into two stints that he tries to do everything on a soft run? Because that's what it looks like. And if he does, he might not be able to finish the soft run. Let's do three. Let's just see it like that, because instead he did 16 laps last time around. Let's try and do it like this. And we'll leave this guy random again, and I will see if we get in, you know, a summary of what are uh, the boosts we're getting. Let's see. It just tells us to practice results, but uh, yeah, seven laps, twenty-seven laps. I guess that's the final stint. Or you know, we have incidents like this guy having no time. Yeah, I would really like to have a little bit more information there on what happened during practice for sure, uh, because we didn't actually get any research points, many research points, if any at all. So I guess it broke down, uh, which wouldn't surprise me. Uh, cars broke down basically all the time around this time, so wouldn't be weird at all. Car-wise, the tire problems here are really the only thing that we can solve, which are these two. So, yeah, I guess I guess no matter how you do it, you are going to end up with the base stats of the chassis here, as we can see. But this is level 4 chassis, I'm wondering if, the, if we get to the base level, you know, beyond 4, if we're going to get buffs. So, I would assume so. We can actually click, click this button and have a little bit of an, little bit of an ask. Chassis level depends on the chief design level of skill. The current parameters can grow every week. It takes some time to reach the plan parameters. If I finish the process ahead of schedule, parameters have not reached the plan values. We turn into problems for next season. Okay, so yeah. If we don't finish the chassis, we'll have those problems that uh, we're currently dealing with. Okay, that was all. Let's see what they have to say on this one. Before I can improve the chassis, I first need to solve chassis problems. Two types of problems, aerodynamic and work with tires. Before I can improve the chassis. So we need to solve those tire issues apparently to improve the chassis further, is what I'm assuming. Solved aerodynamic problem needs to be integrated with the car through the production section. I think we've done that. Solve with tires are integrated automatically. Once I have solved all the problems, I can start improving the chassis. So yeah, we can actually improve the chassis level once we have solved all the problems. Still just tell us what the level actually does. But I would assume it helps with, you know, durability, speed, things like that. So, yeah, a bit of an interesting one. I really need to figure out what's the best way to gain research points, because right now we're not getting any. But as you can see, practice on the track. Um, it's about upgrading the car. I would assume we straight up are just going to need high, high feedback drivers. So, let's go back and have a look at our team here. Takahara. Low feedback, not really the quickest driver. Can I find a new driver at this stage? What is the best way for me to find a new driver? Search. There we go. Driver. Drivers for sponsorships. We can get paid drivers. Oh, okay. And as you would expect, as you can see, the stats are they're not great. Uh, no. Okay, set parameter, contract, and uh, no contract. Okay, one year. Sadov is one of them. Uh, this guy is a different one. What is the highest feedback driver we could get? We could actually promote this guy, even. Yeah, set parameter, uh, feedback. Between five and 10. So we can actually search here. Speed, let's set, set that one too to about 5 to 10. Uh, let's get the stability up to at least 5 out of 10. And this actually tells us a lot about how we, we can get this done. So this guy does seem like a good option. He does have a plus 2. Uh, 7, 3, 9. He's going to struggle to overtaking. But he's not the. it's probably the best option that we have unless we go for this guy. Who's lacking a little bit in speed department, but good in overtakes, good in tires. Um, he's also 
an older driver, so you might actually just uh, give up after a year or so. Currently being paid five four hundred fifty eight thousand. Very high reputation, but yeah, overtake holding position aggression. He's gonna basically be falling back the field, but I think he would be a good choice to just uh, you know get some more stability in the team. I'll make my decision thirty five week. 996Y. Okay, so second driver? Can't hire a driver for this role. Okay, so I can't break contracts is what this is basically telling me. I can actually click this to show the demands. That's uh, interesting. But yeah, it seems like we can't change out the contracts that we currently have. In this case, Takahara. I can release him from the contract. But, I assume then... Honestly, we're making, we're making a save game here. Let's just call it test. The reason why we're saving is because I want to check something. We're going to release uh, Takahara here from his contract. Ooh. We're going to reload if this doesn't work, but that is 10 million down the drain and 10 of those negotiation leadership points. We don't have a lot of those. But yeah, let's try and release him. Again, we're kind of doing this for science right now. He uh, doesn't like us for that, does not think highly of you because I fired him. And it keeps the settings too, that's great. Can I now offer a contract? Okay, so that does not work. Um. Yeah, that does not work, clearly. Could not uh, actually just nab him like that. So if I want to do this, I have to pick a driver without a contract. And I believe there was none that uh, fit the criteria here. So we're just going to load that game back up pretty quickly. Um, a bit unfortunately, you can't really post drivers, but I think it's fine. Uh, it's not, uh, not too bad. I would like to post a better one for the feedback, basically. But facilities-wise, I think we're going upwards, and the staff rate is filling up. We're probably losing more money each week. But we're getting 5.6 now, and the, the production points, uh, the cap's out at 100, though, so having too much of, too many of them isn't good either. I need to figure out what we can actually use them on, because I think what the limiting factor now is actually going to be these four things. Uh, I could, of course, convert some points if we see the, see the need. But I'm wondering if the next thing that we really, really are going to need here is just a test track. I think that might be the way that we generate research points. So for the next few races here, we're going to try and get 20 tire points so that we can see if we can start, you know, improving the chassis a bit. Um, but once you get used to this, I, I think it can actually be pretty good. Depends on how the racing is, though. So uh, let's head over, head over there. We do have a little bit of damage to our parts here. Could try and fix that. That is expensive. That is expensive to fix. A million just for the engine, okay. Yeah, we, uh, we're we not going to be fixing things immediately. A little bit cheaper to fix the other parts here, but uh, yeah. We'll have to see if we can actually switch them out or something too. Because that's going to be painful, okay. Let's go to the race here, see how racing works. We are going to Japan. Slow corners, straights are both equal here. Fast corners a bit slower. Overtaking difficulty is at maximum. Sado has high overtaking skill. He will be very useful. Chelsea's not good at tire saving. Tire wear fuel consumption both 5 out of 10. Uh, I think this might be a pretty bad one for us, but uh, we'll have a look here. I can swap drivers with a reserve driver using the replace button, but note that a replace driver is unlikely to want to the contract with your team after that. <laughs> Okay, that is uh, that is an interesting one for sure, but it's nice that uh, that's an option, which uh, F1 manager had at. Show specifics of the track, what proportion it consists of fast corners, slow corners and straights. Car speed varies in the track attack, here you can see the factors that affect it. One of the components of the track is noticeably prevalent over the others. The car speed will be affected by additional factors corresponding to the type of track. Okay, uh, car speed, okay. Basically, how well the uh, car suits the track. This block of parameters is about parameters that do not directly affect the car speed, but are also very important. Okay. So, 
we're 5 out of 10 on compliance. But potentially we could get Takahara to just get pissed, but going by the name, and again, uh, just by name here, it seems like that might not be a good idea to put Japan. So we'll go to car setup here. We will, I, wish, I really should check the calendar, I guess. But let's go for dry weather setup for both of them. We'll focus power and let us see where we actually end up here. That's about a 30% loss across the board for, well, for 10% for three stats. And they hit the green zone here. And that is actually buff then for, uh, I'm assuming this is more of a rice stall. A dice roll. Help, I'm having a stroke. But yeah, it did actually give us buffs for, uh, you know, the weather. So Takahara, Takahara here might have a good time if we end up on, uh, you know, the better better settings. Since his setup is already pretty good, we're going to go ahead and have him focus on the tire research. And we'll just split it up into two stints. Uh, I guess 14, 19. Something like that. Should be okay. And I'm wondering what we can do with him because work on car setup should actually be beneficial here. So let's say that we put 15 laps in that on the first stint. Then we do some tire research because he's just far more efficient. So I can imagine the feedback stat on your driver's here being quite important. Similarly practice, we end up 8th and 10th. Uh, did a decent amount of laps. Head back to the office. Oh, that wasn't a race. That was the final practice session. Okay. I made a mistake. I thought that was our first race. But we can now solve one of the problems. Uh, let's get the intermediate problem solved. It seems to be a bit bigger than the, you know, wet problem. And uh, apparently that took away from the CFD. I should probably go to research now and start doing this. No, that's the... That was the wrong one. We need to do the other one. Model purchase, because as you can see there on the CFD under R, we could actually have improved the front wing by now. So going to be yikes, but we failed to do that before uh, before the race. I have enough points to start a sponsor search. I think we already have sponsors, uh, you know, available to us here. These guys want those two spots for twenty million a season. Uh, honestly, I think we'll go with Iron Branch. Pick on car, yes. And you want to pay one million for slot H. I don't have anything to compare it to. But seeing that it's level 1 versus level 7 from these boys, I think we're going to refuse uh, refuse it. But I want to wait and see what actually happens if I just let them stay there. Preseason test completed. We are Kinomaki. We are 7th. 1.7 seconds behind. 12 teams in uh, the tournament. The average gap for the 3 sessions is indicated. Okay. The most unreliable team turned out to be Bellucci Racing, who's also the quickest. That is interesting. But yeah, uh, I think we are ready to just uh, continue then. I don't think I have anything in particular I need to do this week. But we do need to keep on doing this, though. Sacrificing. Probably forgot to do that. I wish I could just put it on to do it forever. But again, I would assume that's one of those quality of life things that will be added later on. But so far, although it looks very different from, you know, F1 Manager, which is what you usually see in this channel, it's looks like very, this looks incredibly interesting and it might actually be a lot of fun to play. So hopefully the racing can keep up with uh, this so far. Once we learn a bit more about these points and how they work, I think we're going to have a lot more fun. And for now, we're going to head to Brazil. So let's get that underway. Okay, track type, mostly slow corners. Uh, yeah, we might not have a good race here. It is slow corner galore, fast corners one. Our car is not good for that, so maybe this is not a good place to judge, but it does actually tell us now the forecast for the entirety of the race weekend. No rain expected at all. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll be fine. And I guess the temperature windows for the tires isn't the temperature for the tires themselves, but as you can see, it's what is expected of air temperature. So that does make, uh, make it make a little bit more sense, although, of course, pushing is a factor in that. And, uh, well, the overtaking difficulty is maximum. Our car, car does not, uh, you know, fit in with this. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a uh, it's going to be a painful race if you judge it by that. Luckily, though, our main driver here, Sadov, actually hit that uh, main setup type. 
Unfortunately, didn't get it for the engine too, but this is great, honestly. Let's see what we can do here for Takahara. He two hit it, great. Uh, if it should somehow start raining, he'll hit, get a 30% loss in uh, this one. The fact that he hit slow corners though is also going to help him a ton. Unfortunately, our main boy didn't do that. Oh, not our main boy, our other man. This is our main boy with the stash. Practice session, we have 57 laps of practice. Okay, is it because it's Brazil, it's a short lap? It does look like it. I do want to put 10 laps or 13 laps in on uh, car setup. And then let's put a 20... Can I change tires? Because I assume this is stints rather than softs. That's what would make more sense anyways. And we'll do the same for you. You get 13 laps for your car setup. Although honestly, it would probably be better to do a higher one. But even here, as you can see, the... Uh, the gain here are very very small but it's just you know how it's how it is feedback is going to be important we'll go ahead with this let's go ahead and simulate practice see how many laps we actually end up doing 38 and 39 not shabby both of them got their hopefully a little bit of a setup uh, improvement and here we actually do get that practice summary that i kind of was requesting uh earlier so it does exist it's just race weekend only and as you can see here, we did get a little bit of an improvement in fast corners. We got even more of an improvement in drag reduction. So if you want to go for this rather than, uh, you know, developing a car, you can actually do that. It does give you more improvements than the 10% we saw basically. Uh, well, basically in the beginning. So uh, it's not, not a bad idea, honestly. He even gets a percentage point here in slow corners. And while we can't see, you know, the three point something, two point something, it does give you a summary on what you're getting here. Unfortunately, it looks like the only way we can do quality is by simulating it. So let's see where we actually end up. That is sad. We're down in 12th and 19th. So as I said, our car is 2 out of 10 here for how well it's going to perform on the track. So yeah, we're not going to have a good, uh, good time. It actually tells us efficiency. That's actually amazing. It tells us how efficient it is estimated for these tires to be. Uh, 81 laps. We have fuel for... Okay, so we actually refuel during pit stops. I would assume. Uh, um, and we're doing a split strategy from the get-go. I like this. I like this a lot. Now, they also have a simulate race button here. Which is also great, because that means you can, if you really want to, just take a chill first season, develop your car. Have a little bit more fun that way, if you, you know, like the management aspect rather than the managing the race aspect. But I'm liking that a lot. I clicked one time too many there. Tires in the game have several parameters. Yes, I want to have a look at this. Tire type, tire resource, and what? Over the wheel manager. What did I call it? I've even forgotten. <laughs> My brain, help. OWM2. Tire times differ not in wear rate, but in life. Hard tires have a longer life, so while they have the same wear as soft tires, they wear longer. Okay, so what I'm translating that into is that every tire wears at the same rate. But the durability number is higher. So rather than a percentage like in Apple Manager, a soft tire can have 100, 100 as its uh, stat for durability. And a hard tire can have, say, 200. So they'll be losing durability at the same pace from, you know, 100 to 99, from 200 to 199, 98, 98 to 198, things like that. So the hard tire just has a bigger pool of durability, and the soft tire has a small pool, but they wear at the exact same pace. Bro, and it's, you know, identical situations. Number of life tires will have life if you do not overheat them. So it actually tells you how long you can expect the tires to work. And overall performance size at the current asphalt temperature. This is a complex indicator that includes all the factors affecting on performance at the moment. Okay, so yeah. Tells us how effective they're going to be. And as you can see here, 25 laps expected tire life. So we do want to try a lap at, uh, you know, the correct times. 36 though, so we have a little bit to go on. We can actually push those times potentially if we want to. Or we could push the first stop stint here and go in a little bit earlier. Try an undercut. But it does actually tell you what you can expect. And as you can see here, this man is probably a tad weak on the tires. Even if I change which lamp we want to pit, it's still 24. It's not as good as taking care of it. So it even takes into estimation your driver's uh, ability to, you know, handle tires, which is great. Makes it a lot easier for you to set up a strategy. 
Now, I am very tempted to simulate this one and see what we get. But at the same time, uh, I do want to see the race engine. This is not a track that's suited for us, though. So we'll have a look here. Maybe do another race. But yeah, looks very interesting so far. Track humidity is represented by graph at uh, 0.1 and 0.2. There's a moment of 100% efficiency of this tire. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's basically the same one. So yeah. Basically, it tells you when you should do different sort of tires. In this case, the soft tire is going to be very efficient here, which is where we are. This is when you want to consider going onto the intervals, and this is when you want to consider going onto the wets. Don't know if we have any good, you know, weather calculation, but we'll see. Let's just jump in with this with the basic strategies. I don't really have anything I can change because I don't know how it's going to affect them. And as you see, press space bar or the plus arrow when you're ready to start. So these are the options we're giving. This tells us uh, our current high heating level and uh, the current wear here, base wear is 1.7. And our drivers work with tire skills cancel out the chassis tire wear. So chassis do have an effect on the tire wear here. Increases significantly when your tires overheat, but you can completely ruin the pit stop strategy. Okay, yeah. And they even tell you the efficiency currently. Okay. Uh, using driver order and in high power mode can cause you to heat up. I guess this one on the left here is telling us the current temperature. And high power engine mode, I would assume, is this one to push mode. Engine wear, base wear. I don't know what this number is. If this is a current, you know, durability. I would assume so, since both of them are close. So yeah, and as you can see, this man does have a little bit of a higher wear because he has less uh, work with tire skill. And uh, don't fight, attack, avoid curbs, attack curbs, easy mode or push mode. I think we'll have to go push mode, at least for the start here. Attack, attack curbs, and we'll see how quickly things heat up. Fuel consumption, I would assume it's going to go up. Um, but this is perfectly fine. We have the pit button here. I assume that this is, they're going to automatically pit then, maybe. And we just change the strategy. So you don't have to manually set up your pit stops. I assume the camera is, yeah, whoever you're looking at. So that is what this camera is. Cars, you can actually have a full overview of the car. So yeah, as I said, it was the engine durability. We're down to about 80% at the start of the race weekend. Might need to repair a little bit after this, but that should be okay. Current lap times for our drivers. Any driver, really, not only ours. That is, that's pretty cool. What is this? It is the probability in 109 minutes we're going to get sunny. Light condition is sunny. It can change in 109 minutes to cloudy sunny with an 86% probability. So good. Very good. Road temps, temperature. I guess that's fine. I wonder if we're going to have a little bit of a... Okay, so here you actually see the pit when the pit expectations, I guess. I didn't actually see anything about the pit crew and before the race, which is a little bit unfortunate. Information. That toggle doesn't do anything. But yeah, we have a race menu here. So yeah, it looks, looks good. I think we have everything set up. Both drivers are going to go aggressively here. And we'll see if we can make something happen. Let's press the button. We're about to get underway. Let's race. Don Collins. So as the race settles in, in the lead at the moment, right behind them in second. I think I saw two cars inside each other there, but again, free release build. Sato has done an overtake, but it seems like we have static cameras, which of course are going to be a little bit annoying to, you know, follow your team with. Heat is going up, so I would assume, yeah. You can see heating, driver order push. And if you just click it, how long does it take to. Oh, that's just my engine. Max Krieger in the lead. Hong in so we place. have made it one place. Collins it's better to look at position. 2D, maybe. Yeah, I think this is the better view. Like, I like the side of cameras, so it's not a bad thing to have. We are overheating his tires, as you can see. And it does actually tell you how much it increased the tire wear by 0.4. So yeah, it is a good system, I think. Now, once we cool the tires a bit, I think we can have him attack curbs. And if we see this number go up, that's when we're going to be worried. We can also try and attack the driver in front. There is a gap forming. 
In second place, oh, that's not the ideal racing line. Sorry. Okay, so. I think that's actually just him failing to overtake, but because we haven't actually lost anything. And this is how you actually toggle uh, the interval. Now, we don't have DRS or anything like that, so overtaking is going to be a little bit more different, if you will. So as you can see, the driver's work with tire skills also affect your heating, so I guess we will slow down a little bit here, maybe. Cool down. But yeah, I think we want to just speed things up for now. Again, I'm focusing on one driver here. This guy is still kind of uh, overheating the tires. Uh, we might need to tell him to avoid the curbs, cool the tires a bit. Because right now, they're not really working at all. Um, that was not the idea racing line, sorry. I think we could go for an attack here, quickly. Let's see if we can make something happen. The other car made an attack instead. Lock the tires. Uh, In the lead. Yeah, let's slow down a little bit here, again. Where can I see your current tire wear? These do not look to be tires. Malcolm Hong has just moved into the lead. What a phenomenal move. Yeah, this does tell us exactly how things are going. It does tell us uh, you know sector times. Can even see him getting in second place. A little bit slower on that one. In third position. And here you actually have the info shown like that while being... Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, again, our car is actually suited for this track. This is, this I would assume, is the trial life remaining. So where that didn't start on the maximum. Uh, I don't actually know where the tire life is. Is this the tire life? That would make sense, because this, this is Sauce versus Hards. Let's try and attack him again. See if we can uh, push and get by. In second place, Silva in third position. That at camera angles aren't necessarily bad, but I think I prefer the 2D ones. And let us speed this up a little bit, see if we can get our guy by. But we're gonna have to keep an eye on the heating here. But, yeah, if you don't mind the 2D, I think it's uh, it's been good so far. We get a move done. We are overheating the engine here right now because we're pushing. So we're going to put it to easy mode. Hopefully we will not get overtaken while doing so. And immediately we have reached that cooldown temp, so we're just going to slow down again. We're going to need to cool everything. But yeah, I assume this is tire life because this goes on the wear. So once this hits, I guess, zero, we are going to need to pit. We're supposed to last 25 laps. We'll see. Um, again, I'm just oh, learning so. at this point. Thought oh like I've made a bit of a mistake, but it's fine, I think. He's uh, a little bit behind the other drivers in front. What this one could actually benefit from, too, is having a replay feature. Because if there is one, I haven't seen it. I think we're going to go ahead and attack the curbs here. Just get a little bit more pace in there. And we do want to try and, you know, keep the engine wear somewhat limited. Although, money-wise, I don't think we're going to have any issues. We do want to try and catch up to ninth here and maybe get by him. I'm mainly just looking at this, honestly. Looking at the information <laughs> that's given here. Because there's so much here. That's actually great. It, could tell, it tells you engine performance. Uh... The engine resource, I assume, is the engine wear, you know, having an effect. But, uh, yeah, it's looking good. Not the ideal racing line, sorry. So, I guess, again, smaller mistakes, just getting the car kind of out of shape, maybe. We are overheating the tires there, as you can see, slightly. And we have a car out that promotes us into ninth. So, as long as we can keep everything alive here... We probably have a chance of maybe getting some uh, cheeky points. Now, Takahara here, I have kind of left uh, out to rot. His tires are currently un currently underheated. So, yeah, we need to get that heat up. I kind of forgot to click off that button, which is 
a common thing I do, honestly. It's uh, a weakness of mine, if you will. So let's have him go on the attack. See if he can pull something off here with the uh, with the cool and ready ties that he has. And uh, for Sadov, we're just going to keep him kind of where he is. Big flat spot. I might have to go back and look here and see if we lost a lot of time in life doing that. Yeah, we have reached the temperatures again. We're going to slow down. And I see the engine resource, I would assume, again, is just a resource of, results of the engine wear. So we're losing a lot of performance due to it. But again, uh, in this age, you basically, well, back that here, you would probably be doing that anyways. Kronbach is out from the McFly team. Another DNF. And as you see, 8 is now flying. I think we just need to nurse these tires into the pits. We have three laps to go on. We could attack the curbs there. And I'm curious now if they're going to do the pit stop automatically in lap 25 or not. Because if it works like this with the end of performance, reliability might actually be a you know, most efficient stat as you'll be able to get back on against the other cars later on in the race. But yeah, eight here, flying. So tire is definitely not doing us any favors. Uh, eight is also here on the hard tire, so gets a little bit of an advantage as the soft is basically dying at this point. Cars are now pitting. We should also be pitting within a lap or two. Coming in on this lap. So it actually slows you down and tells you that, oh, the driver is planning to pit this lap. So if I want to pit earlier, I guess I'm going to have to adjust the uh, adjust the timings, so to speak. Okay, on pit. Let's see what happens here. Takes a while. 10 seconds to pit. We get lapped in the process. But we come out in 12th. Bunch of free air. Uh, and I'm wondering if we're going to be able to overtake that lead car. Because I think he is out on hard tires. He is. Takahara locked the tires. Don Collins retires from the podium. Uh, you have overheated your tires by locking up, sir. That's a bit of a problem. Seven laps left of fuel, so I assume he's due to pit in seven laps, but uh, I don't know if the tires are going to live long enough for that. I'm curious, how how different are the lap times now, if we have a look at that? Here it is. So, we put it on lap, right here. And we went from 123s to 119. So tires actually have a huge amount to say. Just look at this. Our fuel is going down, because we were we just fuel for the laps that we're supposed to do. And lap times go up pretty intensely here. So yeah, undercutting definitely being probably one of the better plays. Uh, if you can, you know, make it happen. Particularly in tracks like this where it is difficult to overtake. So us going hard for that final stint might actually really, really pay off here. But we are going to have to pit uh, our boy now. So uh, he's supposed to lap on pit on lap 33. Let's see if he pits this lap now instead. And we're also going to have to give him an extra couple laps of fuel. And we'll have to see if he can actually take care of those tires. Or if we're going to have to put him on something else. You only have softs and hards available to you. Okay, 9.7 seconds. Uh, I guess there's no issues there. He's actually been lapped there by his teammate as well. Gonna sting a little bit, but uh, looks good. Honestly, the only thing I might have wish a little bit of right now is just a way to speed this up a little bit more. But it's not bad, honestly. I like this a lot. And with all the DNFs that we've had, all four of these, uh, we could potentially also see some points coming our way. But again, we have a team that should be getting points, I think. Um, even though top six, you know, is not that difficult to get. We're still eight seconds behind the car in front of us. And we're actually losing out, I think, in terms of lap times to the car in front. And this is fastest lap, like the best lap they've done. So, okay, so that's, that's not what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. So the car in front is doing running way quicker than us right now. 99s. We're losing out about a second. We're also losing out the car behind. Locked the tires a bit. Overheated it. We are going to need to cool the tires. 
But yeah, that does pro provide us with a couple potential some problems, I think. Um, when are we planning to pit again? Lap fifty. Okay, we can attack curbs. Show the best pace. It's gonna help. It's gonna heat up the tires a little bit. But because he has such good skills to begin with, it should be fine. And we'll see if those lap times do improve doing this. Because it doesn't actually have any effect on the tire wear. So you're going to basically be juggling cooling versus pushing, I think. As you can see, 19.1. So what that tells us is that the AI is actually actively using these orders to speed up their drivers. So we should probably be doing the same thing. Now... Again, this is more of a learning experience, but I'm pretty sure the AI, as you can see here now, Lonne is doing, well, he's still quicker than us. Would assume he is on fresher tires. But as I said, that does hint towards the AI is actively managing the tires, which is what we like to see. It means that if you want to do the management yourself, it is going to have a bit of a... Uh, Bit of an effect on you so we can push the time push the engines of them now and again we can use attack him to overtake but mainly what you're going to be doing here is probably just managing the heat of your tires in order to push when you can take it easier when you can but yeah it's definitely looking uh, looking good honestly looking really really good we still need to make keep these alive for six more laps um i assume that 1.7 here is the way we're losing each lap maybe that would make sense so uh, we don't really have a lot here to, to go on, and uh, that is a bit of an issue. And it looks like 1.7 wear per lap is correct. Did lock the tires again. Uh, doesn't really actually lose anything when it locks the tires, but the heat does go up there. And that is a bit of a problem. So stability probably has a huge effect on the lockups. Sorry if you hear that. My headset just needed to replace its battery. And uh, yeah, unless we have a DNF in the top uh, few teams here. I think we're going to have a hard time do getting in the points. But the learning here. The learning of realizing that, yes, we do need to... Uh, we do need to manage during a race. It's actually pretty nice. It's going to make, uh, make the game a lot more fun, I think. And we actually got out of the way for number one there. And as a result, number one actually... Uh, put us in a bad position. And... I thought we were on lap 40. Well, I don't think we're on lap 49. I think we're on lap 48. Yeah, plus one lap if we switch over to this one instead. So we're going to have a little bit of a bad time on these tires now, unfortunately. Man, has locked the tires again. Really wish we had a better second driver, but uh, it's okay, I think. We're going to do this uh, lap without uh, any uh, any tires left, basically. And we'll be coming in at the end. We'll have to also do a little bit of, you know, experimentation here to figure out what is the best settings for your engine in terms of lap times. Green pits with us. Uh, it comes out ahead, of course. Shouldn't be that surprising. And uh, we'll have to see if we can actually catch up with him. We actually got overtaken here by a different car. So we'll attack. We'll attack the curbs a bit. And as you can see here, we do have a certain amount of tire life. And we get the overtake done there, kind of for free, because of number five here doing a bit of an overtake. But I'll try and manage over the course of this stint, the temperatures, be aggressive when we can, and see what we're looking at in terms of lap times. I want to try and push for this entire lap. We're doing a nine, uh, 19th one is our best one. Let's see if this one actually ends up uh, better, or, you know, close to better at least. And there we go. Not... A lot better, but uh, getting close to it. I've actually forgot about second boy here so long now that he's on basically a wasted set already. Uh, do we have another hard set for him? Because I think that is going to be the best option uh, to put him on. And currently, when he pits on left uh, 57, we want him to have enough you know, fuel to go to the end. But this that looks to be okay. We can actually just pit him right away here, lap 55, put in two laps of extra fuel. That should solve his issues, I would hope. But yeah. Our driver here is a decent chunk of time behind the others. So again, slow cornering was important. Uh, I don't I haven't actually figured out just how good our car is compared to uh, the rest of the field. So that does provide a little bit of a problem. But uh, 
For right now, it should be okay. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to playing more of this game. We're getting very closer to the end of this uh, this race. Again, really wish we could just speed it up a little bit more in this kind of dead zones. But I can understand why the maximum speed up is this. They, It seems the developers want you to manage your, your car a bit more. You are going to have a bit more of a challenging uh, timer, I think, managing your car versus others. And uh, But right now, let's face it, we, we're just coasting. There's no real... There's nothing we really can do. Except manage the man if he locks his tires. But 20 laps to go, at least 1.7 a lap. Still have a lot to work on, but yeah. It seems to be pretty straightforward, although, yeah, we keep on locking the tires, heating them up by that. But, uh, as I said, I'm fine with it. Let's just try and get to the end of this race. And we'll see where we're going. So, yeah. Uh, while we do that, I'll give you my initial thoughts. It looks very interesting. Uh, it's going to require to go a little bit more in-depth into the uh, the way it works. But so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. If you do want to see more in the future, because I just realized this recording is fairly long, and I was planning to just do it once. If you do want to see more of this game in the future, before release, if you have something in particular you want me to test, so that you can go into, uh, into it with a little bit of knowledge. If you want, uh, you know, not to be spoiled, let me know. But as I said, game is supposed to be released on, I believe, the 24th of October. Let me just double check that quickly, just in case I am wrong. I uh, wouldn't, like wouldn't like to do that. Now, I don't have anything, uh, sponsorship or anything with this game. But I will leave a link to it in the description. And, uh, and uh, well, you can find it there. I'm just struggling right now to find the game in my library. There we go. So yeah, plan for 24th of October. Should be uh, fairly straightforward there. And as I said, so far, no sponsor or anything. The PR team behind this game, I assume, or who they've hired, asked me if I was interested in the opportunity to have a look at the key, have a look at the game before it released. And I said, yeah, sure, I would love that. They gave me a key, told me that I could do whatever I wanted. No uh, embargoes, no anything. And so far, as I said, it looks very promising to me. Looks a little bit different than... Uh, let's face it, graphically, it doesn't look like Apple Manager, but it does look like it uh, has some of the things that it needs for a racing game. I don't know how I feel currently about the micromanagement that you might need to do, but... Uh, I'm still liking it a lot, although again, I'm getting kind of distracted not doing what I should do with the uh, with the uh, race management here. The fact that you can simulate races is great, the fact that it seems to focus more on the management aspect. I'll have to see how I like the points going forwards, but uh, yeah. <coughs> Definitely not too shabby. Is out of the race. What a Villa RT, Serrano. Uh, I don't think that's anyone ahead of us, unfortunately. It's this man right here. If he was ahead of us, we would have been in the points. Until Green catches up to us, because he is a lot quicker than us, honestly. He pitted later. He has fresher tyres. As you can see, soft tyres, full push. So, uh, yeah, it shouldn't come as a, a surprise at all. But yeah, uh, again, game is out 24th. If you want to see more, let me know. And uh, we might focus a little bit more on development aspect, which is uh, what I'm very, very curious about. The racing aspect, while good, could benefit from uh, a little bit more speeding up, maybe a little bit more uh, finesse on the cameras, but honestly, it's good. It's more than enough for this sort of game. And also, they do give you all the information that you need right over here. You can look who's fastest lap, you can check why people are out. You can check who has pitted, how many times. In this case, uh, the guys that are is behind us has actually done a four-stopper. Sorry, a three-stopper, basically. And it's kind of beating us. And this man has gone all soft. So, yeah, it's interesting. 109 minutes. Uh, this one hasn't updated, though, so that might be a little bit of a concern. But, honestly, it's perfectly okay. Uh, again, it's a pre-release build a month before release. It looks good. I don't think we've run into a single bug so far. Maybe overtaken, getting overtaken while being, you know, lapped, but 
Again, I wouldn't put that into a hugely concerned box or anything like that. Anton Sadov has made a big locker. Oh dear, that is going to be a big flat spot. Yeah, we're just going to try and get through this race and see what the end of race screen looks like. If there's anything information to be gleaned there. And yeah. Bit of dead time, which I don't know what to do with. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll have to see. I might also, because there's no restrictions, I might also stream this in the near future. But I still do have the McLaren. Uh, I haven't actually been posting anything commentary-wise with my voice for the last couple of days because I've been wanting to save it, up, save it up for the most part to get this done. I was basically mute yesterday. I did try and record the Alfa Romeo, uh, just on a different topic, but I got through one race and then I started uh, wheezing. So, yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have some for magic content soon but this so far looks good there we go that's actually really really good that it tells you that the weather has changed uh it did say in 109 minutes which i guess kind of matches this uh this race time but that there it actually pops up and tells you what the next one is going to be so in third position. yeah in 11 minutes Krieger full cloudy so there we go we finished eighth in our first race 11th for the second driver we'll take that uh, and as I said, it seems like the AI are actually pushing the tires as much as they can. So we're going to have to probably micromanage a little bit. Race time here, 149.08, uh, which kind of matches the 109, you know, expectations on the weather. So that is good. That is really, really good. Unfortunately, uh, we don't really get any points because we're not in the top six. Uh, Buffalo, Alucci, Brasilia, McFly, and Green Energy kind of stole those. But again, our car didn't really fit this track. Two out of ten stars. Change of regulation for components. The Federation has published a new regulation for components. Manufacturers of gearboxes, brake, hydraulics, and suspension. Well, it takes this information into account when working on the current generation of components. Okay. I'm curious about what it actually did. Let's have a look here. New decision for the championship events. Let's go through this before we end today's, uh, you know, quick look. John the Jesus. <laughs> oh. So they'll actually, you know, fix this throughout. They'll actually sign contracts throughout the season. Not at the end, like F1 Manager does. That's good. Uh, Pedro Paolo, Bellucci Racing with the race. Posted Dan Collins, retires from Racing Life 27. Uh, Corel and Forza had known their cars reached the flag. I like this. It gives you a little bit of an update on the race. Teammate qualification duels. This one is also interesting. Uh, Takahara vs. Sadov, uh, 01. So yeah, again, just... Nice little information to get at the end. Can't complain too much. Uh, I thought we had already signed with Iron Wrench. Or do I need to do something else to make that happen? Do I need to refuse this one? Oh, there are no more empty slots on the car. Might be that we have actually a little bit of a bug there with how the car looks. Might also be that I need to sign it before the livery locks in, maybe? That would be interesting too. But yeah, could actually be that we have an issue with that. We'll have a look at that probably next time. But we'll have a look at the new decisions for the CFD. We can actually now do an upgrade on the front wing. Let's just have a quick look at that. I'm probably going to have say have a quick look at something for the next, uh, you know, 40 minutes or so. We'll see. Chassis next year, looking good. We already achieved the green zone. Our level is going up. I'm wondering if we can develop this more than what it says here, because currently we're lacking a little bit on the slow corners department. Uh, the chassis for 96, we didn't get the necessary tire points here to solve this issue, so we'll have to get that next time, I think. Championship event, change of regulation for engines. You can get acquainted with the upcoming changes in the profile for engine manufacturers. Okay. Oh. Our engine manufacturer is going to be banned next year. <laughs> or rather, I guess it's going to be weakened, I would assume. So those are the regulations that are hitting there. Uh, yeah, and let's see. If they don't fix that, I guess they're going to be banned. I assuming all engines here are looking... No, let's see. The prim basically, the extra points, I assume, are going to get banned for next year, which means Trevera here is an insanely good option for one engine. Let's get an off-road contract for... Uh, 
Partner contract? Client contract? Let's try a partner contract for 97, 98. Send an offer, see what they feel like. Also in contact with. So it actually tells you who else they're in contact with. Is our name among these? No. Okay, so we have this they make a decision on I guess week 25. Um so we're gonna have a little bit of a negotiation here. But there was there were some changes to other things too. Um so we will go into Guess contracts is actually the best place to find these things, honestly. Uh, let's just click on this and see what we can find in terms of suppliers. Okay, I need to figure out where I find the list of suppliers, I guess. I'm a little bit lost right now. The engine does need a little bit of fixing here. Uh, I don't know, can we just switch the engines though? Because if we need to fix them, it's going to be very, very expensive. I guess we're going to have to do that. But at least it's instant, so that's quick. We could do another model purge. Honestly, we're going to do that. Uh, we have an engine. Oh, sorry, we have a negotiation here. Pick on car. What does that matter? Because it just does this. I'm, I feel like I'm missing something here, somewhere I need to go and do something. Because we, we're trying to sign the contract, but I could also be that we just can't change delivery at this point. And that is causing us a little bit of pain. There are no more empty slots in this car, okay. Yeah, I, I'm very confused about how that works, but again, could just be me missing something. So I'll have a look at the comments. You guys probably probably caught that. Well, I didn't, interestingly enough. Uh, but I am trying to figure out where I can get next year's parts, so to speak. Here I can click on the name and have a look, which makes that easy. Suppliers, but I can't do that here. It did say something changed with them, but I don't know what, which is going to make a bit of a problem. But it could also just be that because I have a contract already, I can't check it. Well, as I said, I'm just stupid. There is uh, That's also a very, very probable possibility. But yeah, I'll see if I can figure out the uh, issue with contracts for next time. But for now, we will keep on going. And as I said, I just want to have a look at what happens if I upgrade the safety. We received a response from Tiberi from the offer. Uh, currently, we're rated at 2.7. Brasilia is rated a little bit higher. Negotiation. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. We'll have to, again, also have a look at that later. Safety, I guess it got implemented immediately. But we can, of course, go to the garage and have a bit of a look here. Uh, we need to upgrade these, uh, uh, you know, not unsurprisingly. And I guess the number in parentheses here isn't how many we have, it's the level. So a little bit of confusion there for me to, you know, F1 manager. But as I said, this has been a first look at this game. Hope you enjoyed and I hope I'll see you around next time. I'm probably going to be playing this more. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something in particular you want me to have a look at uh, next time around. Probably going to be a couple of days until we see more of this, but it's been fun. I am enjoying it so far. It's going to get uh, probably more interesting as it gets developed more. Again, it's still over three weeks left until it releases. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye.